Well, we finally made it to the very last episode of Prehistoric Planet. I just have to say I've really enjoyed getting to watch this. I've also really enjoyed sort of diving into these episodes with you all. As sad as I am to see this little series come to a conclusion, let's get right into it. Episode 5, Forest. We begin this episode with Austro Poseidon. A group of these massive sauropods are roaming through the forest. What are they doing? Eating, of course. You'd be surprised at how many people depict these giants as chewing their food like giant cows. But if you take a look at their skulls, they don't actually have the teeth for chewing. So at this moment, the most current theory is that they were simply shoveling greenery into their giant mouths. These guys were literal eating machines. A fun little way to get two paleontologists to argue is to ask them where they would place the nose hole on these dinosaurs. If you look at older depictions of them, they were always located on the top of the head. More up-to-date science says this is a bit unlikely, so I'm at least liking the depiction of where this guy has its nose hole at. Up next, we get Triceratops, a lot of people's favorite dinosaur. In this segment, the plants that the Triceratops are eating release poisonous toxins, so the animals have to combat this by searching for an antidote. And of course, the antidote is hidden in a deep, dark cave. Watching the herd move through the passage in total darkness looked excellent, almost as if they filmed real animals moving in the dark with night cameras. After a little bit of a journey, it turns out their antidote is a clay lick. The dinosaurs are using this mineral to continue feeding on toxic plants. Clay lick sites are incredibly interesting to me. We can see things like this happen in the Amazon. A variety of macaws and other animals will flock to the steep walls of red clay caused by erosion. While experts still argue about why they eat it, a very popular theory is for salt. Now, this next part might actually be my absolute favorite from this particular episode. We get to see a male Carnotaurus, and wow, does he just look incredible. These were such beefy animals, I'm really happy to see how fantastic it looks on screen here. The male is busy tidying up and trying to keep the forest floor as clean as possible. After getting the attention of a female, his time has come. He has to leave a good impression on her if he wants to mate, so he starts dancing. I just have to say, I am so in love with this bird-like representation in dinosaurs. I am genuinely fascinated by the anatomy of these guys. By examining fossils, we can see that these arms had powerful muscles attached, and their ball socket joints allowed for great mobility. Also, if you ever take a look at the skull of a Carnotaurus, they are very squat. It looks a lot more dramatic when you compare them to another dinosaur like, say, T-Rex. They were incredibly powerful predators, so I'm especially fond of getting to see them do a little bird-like dance. Let me smash, please. No, Ron. Go find Becky. You want some fuck? No, Ron. I don't want some fuck. I got you, Blue. After that, the show takes us over to East Asia where we get to see a beautiful forest of ginkgo trees. In this bit, we get to see Carithoraptor, and wow, what a fantastic design. That gorgeous blue feathering in this forest is just incredible to look at. 
getting to see dinosaurs like this, it's very difficult for me to look at cassowaries and not think of dinosaurs. However, the Carithoraptors are not alone. They're being followed by Chanchosaurus. This one also has an equally gorgeous looking design. The artists gave it a sort of forest color scheme, which would camouflage excellently. I really love the use of both light feathering on the body as well as incorporating scales. We follow the female Chanchosaurus through multiple hunts until finally she is successful. We are then taken to another forest fire scene. Walking among the ash and soot is an Atrociraptor. I love how it just looks like a giant groundhog. Not only is it in this forest to munch on some beetles, but it even begins to use the smoke from smoldering flames as an insecticide. It was pretty interesting to watch it pick up a stick and hold it under its wing to kill the bugs. We even get to see an ankylosaur with emerald green coloring. The narrator tells us that it's eating charcoal to help neutralize the plant toxins in its stomach. I'm assuming this was a nod to the real-life stomach contents of an ankylosaur. Paleontologists believe that it was eating after a forest fire, because the stomach contents revealed varieties of ferns with traces of charcoal. Another favorite part of the episode for me was the Therizinosaurs. We get to watch some six-month-old babies lurking around in the dark forest searching for food. Their claws may look intimidating, but they are actually herbivores. And lucky for them, they found some honey. Getting to watch them try and climb a tree to reach the bee's nest was just too cute for me. After getting to watch these little cuties bumble around for a bit, we're treated to seeing an adult Therizinosaurus, clocking in at a whopping 30 feet tall. These animals are just such an incredible part of evolution. I loved everything from the fluffy design to the posture, it's all such a good representation of this unique dinosaur. And to wrap everything up, we get to look at some cute, tiny little Zalmoxies. Just kidding, of course they get eaten. A giant Hatsagopteryx unfortunately ambushes these little dinosaurs. It's interesting to watch such a large pterosaur keep its wings so tightly folded in the dense forest. And wow, how satisfying to see it stretch and flap its large wings after walking onto the open beach. We then get to see the pterosaur take off, very similar to how a bat would. In fact, this method of propulsion is how paleontologists speculate they would lift their bodies from the ground. How romantic, getting to watch a giant pterosaur fly off into the sunset. So, that was the final episode, wrapping up Prehistoric Planet. What did I think? It was honestly so gorgeous to watch. The way they blended real scenery and creatures with both practical effects and CGI go hand in hand with giving its audience a realistic view of dinosaurs and what their ecosystems may have looked like. With stunning shots and wonderful designs of the animals, I absolutely adored watching this. This series is great for both the casual dinosaur fan and paleo enthusiasts alike. If I had to choose what I liked the least about it, I wish they had gone into more detail about some of the non-dinosaurian creatures that appear, seeing things like mosquitoes, bees, and others like it really made me wish they just took a minute and maybe speculated on when these creatures first evolved. 
fossil evidence, etc. Also, very little information on the prehistoric plants that were shown. I'm sure every paleobotanist was quite disappointed. So that combined with some of the burnout I felt from seeing certain herds of dinosaurs pop up in every episode made each installment feel a little too formulaic for me. But despite all of that, this was still an incredible watch for me, and I feel like you'll love it too. If you haven't already, please check it out as soon as you can, and maybe let me know what you think about it. Thank you again for watching this, and I'll see you all next time.